In this video, we're going to cover ACLS tachycardia rhythms for paramedic static and dynamic cardiology. Let's jump right in. So the tachycardia rhythms for ACLS include sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, SVT, ventricular tachycardia with a pulse, and polymorphic ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. Sinus tachycardia. The site of origin is the SA node. There's a P wave before every QRS, same size and shape. The PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. The QRS will be the same size and shape, usually less than 0.12 seconds. The R to R interval is regular, the P to P interval is regular, and the rate is 101 to 150. Now for treatment, sinus tachycardia usually doesn't require rhythm specific treatment because it is a compensatory rhythm. When somebody is in sinus tachycardia, they're usually compensating for either fever, pain, hypovolemia, or anxiety, amongst other things. So the best treatment for sinus tachycardia is to treat the underlying cause. Next is atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is another common rhythm that we see. The site of origin is multiple ectopic sites in the atria, which means that there are impulses firing all over chaotically. There are no discernible P waves. The PR interval cannot be measured. The QRS is usually the same size in shape and usually less than 0.12 seconds. The P to P interval cannot be measured. The R to R interval is irregular. And with atrial fibrillation, we look at a atrial rate and a ventricular rate. So the atrial rate can be as high as 350 beats per minute or up to 500 beats per minute or more. As far as the ventricular rate is concerned, a slow ventricular response would be a rate less than 60. Between 60 to 100 will be a controlled AFib. From 100 to 150 would be a rapid ventricular response and anything above 150 would be an uncontrolled AFib. Treatment for AFib, we wanna determine whether our patient is stable or unstable. To determine whether a patient's stable or unstable, I recommend using CASH, C-A. A -S -H, and that stands for chest pain, altered mental status, shortness of breath, or signs of shock and hypotension or heart failure. If the patient has any of those symptoms, then they are considered unstable. So for an unstable patient, we will give medication. And for AFib, that's cardizem. The initial dose is 0.25 milligrams per kilogram, followed by 0.35 milligrams per kilogram 10 to 15 minutes later. For an unstable patient, we will synchronize cardiovert. And depending on the monitor that you use, you wanna follow the manufacturer's recommendations for how to synchronize cardiovert. But for example, with a life pack, we would start out at 200 joules and escalate if those shocks are ineffective. Now, if you have a patient and you synchronize cardiovert and it is not effective and they are unstable, you can consider giving diltiazem or cardizem after that. Atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is characterized by those saw-toothed uh, waves in between the R waves, which are called flutter waves. So the site of origin is usually one atrial site. The P waves are usually not visible. They are usually hidden behind the flutter waves. The PR interval cannot be measured. The QRS is usually the same size and shape usually less than 0.12 seconds. The P to P interval is not present. The R to R interval is usually regular, except in a varying block. And the F to F waves or the flutter waves are usually regular as well. The atrial flutter, we look at the atrial rate and the ventricular rate. So the atrial rate can be between 250 and 350. And the ventricular rate is usually 60 to 100. If it's above, 150 though we would consider that an uncontrolled atrial flutter so we can also look at the ratio of the block and that is flutter waves to r waves so if we have two flutter waves to one r wave that would be a two to one block if we have three flutter waves to one r wave that would be a three to one block treatment for atrial flutter is pretty much the same as atrial fibrillation. If our patient is stable, we will give them cardizem, 0.25 milligrams per kilogram, followed by 0.35 milligrams per kilogram 10 to 15 minutes later. And if they are unstable, we will synchronize cardiovert, escalating our
hard dose until it is broken. If synchronized cardio version is not effective, then we can consider diltiazem or cardazem as a second line treatment for an unstable patient. Next, we have SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. This is characterized by a very fast, narrow, complex tachycardia. The site of origin is the atria. As far as P waves are concerned, there are technically P waves before every QRS. However, they are usually buried in the preceding wave's T wave. So most of the time with SVT, you're not actually gonna see the P wave. The QRSs are usually the same size and shape. The PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. The P to P interval, if we could see it, would be regular. Uh, but again, we usually don't see it. The R to R interval is regular. The rate is 150 to 250 and it starts suddenly and it can end suddenly. Treatment, we wanna determine whether our patient is stable or unstable. If our patient is stable, we wanna try vagal maneuvers. I like to give them a 10 cc syringe and tell them to blow the plunger out. If that's ineffective, we move to adenosine, six milligrams followed by a rapid 10 cc flush. And if that's ineffective, we do adenosine 12 milligrams followed by a 10 cc rapid flush if adenosine is ineffective we can consider beta blockers or calcium channel blockers if the patient is unstable we need to synchronize cardiovert so we can consider sedation for example uh, five milligrams of iv versed we can consider a trial of adenosine but ultimately we want to synchronize cardiovert starting at 100 joules and escalating each time ventricular tachycardia here we're talking about ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. If you want to learn more about pulseless ventricular tachycardia, you can check out this video and click the link up at the top where I go over cardiac arrest arrhythmias for static and dynamic cardiology. But in this video, we're talking about ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. Now, ventricular tachycardia is characterized by a wide QRS and a very fast rate. The site of origin is one or more ventricular sites. This rhythm originates in the ventricles. P waves are usually not present. The PR interval is not measurable. The QRS is usually the same size and shape, but wide and bizarre and greater than 0.12 seconds. The P to P interval is not measurable and the R to R interval is usually regular. The rate can be between 100 and up to as high as 250 beats per minute. So treatment for ventricular tachycardia is stable versus unstable using Cash. For a stable patient, we'll consider adenosine for a regular and monomorphic rhythm. And then we will move to amiodarone, 150 milligrams over 10 minutes, followed by a maintenance infusion of one milligram per minute for six hours. For the unstable patient, we will synchronize cardiovert. We can consider sedation like five milligrams of IV versed. And then we will synchronize cardiovert according to the manufacturer's recommendations. But the start Starting dose is normally 100 joules, and then we escalate that up. Finally, we have polymorphic ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. Now, it's important to remember, not all polymorphic VTACs are torsades, but all torsades are polymorphic VTAX. The difference is, is when we're talking about torsades, torsades is characterized by a prolonged QT interval. The site of origin is unclear whether it is uh, one ventricular site or multiple ventricular sites. P wave is usually not present. P to R interval is usually not measurable. The QRS varies in size going from low amplitude to high amplitude. It's important to try to recognize whether this is a regular polymorphic VTAC or a torsades because they are treated slightly differently. So for a polymorphic VTAC, we would treat that the same that as we would treat ventricular tachycardia. Um, if it is torsades, we would administer magnesium sulfate, two grams over one to two minutes. If the patient is unstable, we're going to defibrillate because it is extremely difficult to sink on a 
polymorphic VTAC with the irregular waves, variant amplitude. So we would normally defibrillate at whatever your manufacturer's recommended dose is. For the life pack, it would be 360 joules. So these ACLS rhythms are a major part of the paramedic, both static and dynamic cardiology portions of the psychomotor exam. So it's really important that you have a deep understanding of these rhythms and how to treat them. And if you're struggling with any of these rhythms, you can check out these videos here where I go over cardiac arrest rhythms and bradycardia rhythms. Also, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.